So what I'd like to uh, talk to you about today is why thermal management is important for LEDs. Uh, we'll do this by taking a look at three key points. First, I'd like to uh, talk about and clear the misconception that LEDs don't generate heat um, and why one would think that uh, LEDs don't generate heat. Second uh, topic that I'd like to cover is why thermal management for LEDs has become such a hot topic. And the third point would be to explain what a thermal management system is and why you need one. So why would many people think that LEDs do not generate heat? If one was to put their hand underneath a LED light source, they would feel no heat under, coming from the light source. However, if they were to put it underneath a light bulb, they feel a lot of heat on their hand. If you were to look at the spectrum of light in a light bulb, you can see that a lot there's a lot of content in the infrared spectrum. However, if you look at this pink line, which would indicate the LED light spectrum, there's no very little component extending into the infrared spectrum, which is why you don't feel that. However, an LED does generate heat. It just needs to be conducted away have, as opposed to having it radiated away. Why do you need a thermal management system when now when you didn't a few years ago? Several changes have occurred in the LED industry. One of them is that the semiconductor die size is up from several years ago. It has increased by at least eight times, going from 250 micron up to 2 millimeter square of area. This enables higher forward current through the LED. So we went from 50 milliamps or even 20 milliamps all the way up to 2 amps or more being able to push through the LED. That higher current and larger die size increases the amount of heat through a single device. In addition, many designers are putting multiple LEDs together in an array to get a lot more light. This can be done either within the luminaire by the luminaire ma manufacturer on a circuit board, or LED manufacturers are starting to put together multiple die within a single package. This concentrates the heat generating from the light source. That heat needs to be conducted away in the system. If we were to look at the semiconductor device itself uh, and actually what happens when we were to apply power to it and the semiconductor device, you have essentially you have the holes and electrons in the semiconductor device combining. This recombination can occur and and often produces a photon of light or a uh, generates heat. The radiative combinations generate the photon of light from the epitaxial layer. The non-radiative recombinations generate heat that needs to be conducted away. This starts with the LED itself, the LED package. The package is designed differently uh, in different products. Here are two examples. One in the power top lid pa package on the left hand side, you use a traditional lead frame style where the semiconductor device is mounted to the lead frame and the heat is conducted away through the lead frame outside of the package. These are usually uh, packages used with smaller size dies. The larger die devices such as Dragon, Oslon, and Ostar type products utilize a heat slug or heat spreader technology where the die is placed directly on this heat spreader and that heat spreader will help move the heat away from the semiconductor device into the next stage of your thermal system. The system can be broken down into three main parts. The LED component itself, the substrate, and the heat sink. These three components comprise the whole system. The overall thermal resistance of the, each of these components could be added together like a series circuit resistor and get the total thermal resistance of the system. Let's take a quick look at how we might be able to utilize this concept of combining thermal resistances of each of the different components of a complete thermal system. If we were to compare two different LEDs having different thermal resistances, one, the Golden Dragon, having a thermal resistance of 6.5 degrees C per watt, and let's say another LED, which had a 10 degrees C per watt thermal resistance. And the rest of the system being the same for the substrate, 3 degrees C per watt, and the heat sink, 3 degrees C per watt. 
we can then run through this calculation. We'll add up all three components, get a total thermal resistance in the case of the Golden Dragon system, 77 and a, excuse me, 12 and a half degrees C per watt versus the other LED, 16 degrees C per watt. Knowing that complete thermal resistance system of the system, we can then plug that in, multiply that by the power of the LED, and add that to the ambient temperature that the LED is operating at to get this important product, the junction temperature. If we were to do that for the Golden Dragon, which had the 6.5 degrees C per watt thermal resistance, our junction temperature and a system that's running at 40 degrees C would be 77.5 degrees C. The other LED, which had a 10 degrees C per watt thermal resistance, operating that LED at 40 degrees C ambient temperature would yield an 88 degrees C junction temperature. So this mere 3.5 degrees C per watt in thermal resistance results in a 10 degree difference in the junction temperature between these two different LEDs. So why should you invest in a good thermal management solution? We just saw that there's a 10 degree difference, but what does that mean for you? If we manage the junction temperature of the LED, we then manage what's called thermal degradation. Thermal degradation is the reduction of light output from the LED as its junction temperature increases. Also with good thermal management and minimizing the junction, temperature will also ensure that the LED will operate without, without incurrence of no light conditions. We'll also ensure that the LED produces the expected amount of light for the application's lifetime. This is often referred to as lumen maintenance or the loss of light over the lifetime of the product. Thermal degradation. If we look at thermal degradation, we can see that there's a change in the light output and the relative light output out of the device, depending upon the temperature. This is different as LEDs are usually measured in what they call instantaneous light output. This instantaneous light output is a measurement taken at 25 degrees C. However, oftentimes in the application, the application junction temperature is much more than 25 degrees C, so that needs to be compensated for in the application. These curves are often found in LED manufactured data sheets on how to, how to compensate for that increase in junction temperature. I would like to point out that these curves are different for each device in different colors, so it, you should take care during your design to make sure that you look up the specific device and its related thermal degradation curve. The no light failure condition can occur when especially when epoxy encapsulated lens materials are used in the LED construction. The epoxy encapsulation is an encapsulation that surrounds the semiconductor chip and helps protect it and puts it into a package that can be easily manufactured. However, the glass transition temperature of an epoxy tends to be about 125 degrees C. If you were to exceed this maximum junction temperature of the epoxy, it starts to liquefy slightly. Once that's done, once that liquef liquefaction has occurred and you reduce the temperature, that will begin to harden again. Once that hardens, it'll start to put stress on the chip and the bond wire, potentially breaking that uh, bond wire connection or the chip with those stresses. Today, many manufacturers, especially in high brightness LEDs, utilize silicone to encapsulate the chip and the bond wire. The silicone is a softer material that does not harden and put these forces on the chip or the bond wire. That way, when it does experience higher temperatures, those forces are not being put upon the semiconductor. We can also see a relationship between the temperature that the LED operates and its overall lifetime. You should incur make sure that you account for the temperature that the LED is operating at and the expected lifetime of the design for your application. Just to summarize, a good thermal management system should be used with all LED luminaires. Consider the temperatures that are being operated at, that the LED will be operated at. Minimize the effects of thermal degradation by controlling the LED's junction temperature with the thermal system. And ensure that the LED will meet the application's planned lifetime. Thank you.